So I asked 100 people, it's actually slightly more than 100 people, what one piece of advice would they give to other engineers? Now, these answers came from people who were mid-level, senior, tech leads, engineer managers, um, sort of all across that range. And it's information which is good for anyone of any level of development. Some of the answers surprised me. But what I did is I collected the top six uh, that had the most amount of um, responses, likes, and were the most, I feel, important, although they were all important. And I'm going to go through them in this video for you. Now, just a caveat, I did not chase down 100 developers. Thankfully, I have quite a decent following on LinkedIn. So I was able to ask this question. If you don't follow me on LinkedIn, check out the comments and uh, follow me, send me, a, send me a request to follow me because you'll see a lot of content like this on LinkedIn, which is very, very valuable for you. So let's get stuck into the video. Okay, so the first thing was actually something I wrote. So <laughs> this is sort of a bit of a toot my own horn, I suppose you could say. But one of the things I've learned over the last five years in my journey as someone who's come from knowing nothing about software to being a senior developer is the fact that you will never know everything and that is not a bad thing. What does that mean? Well, you may have heard of this little thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And if you haven't, basically what it means is the more you learn, the more you realize you don't actually know. And this is the perfect analogy or paradigm to bring into software engineering, software development, data engineering, AI, whatever it is. The more we learn, the more we go out or go into these fields and learn about them, the more we realize how big these fields actually are. Now, I did this when I was learning front-end development. I thought, well, well, we go back 20 years, it's just a bit of HTML, CSS, but now there's so much more to learn. There's HTML, there's CSS, there's JavaScript, there's a ton of libraries and frameworks, there's your storage, there's your uh, local storage, there's your cookies, there's your API calls. Essentially, software development is huge. And the more you learn about it, the more you will realize you do not know. And as I go back to the first point I made at the start of this, that is okay. You do not need to know everything because this field is a continuous learning path. Now, what I loved about asking this question to everyone in my network is how much I learned. Um, and thankfully it seems like a lot of things I already do, but there are some interesting things that I learned as well with this sort of came across in a new perspective. So the second thing that I'm gonna bring on this list is somebody who wrote, the end user doesn't care about what technology they use, what technology you use, they care that the product works. So as technical people, we very much get caught up in, well, I have to do this in React, I'm not using Vue or Svelte, it's disgusting, or this has to be done in Next.js, or we're gonna to have to use context over Redux, or all these silly little things which will affect the end user by precisely nothing, unless you're talking about serious performance enhancements, really the end user does not care whether you are using React, whether you are using Svelte or Vue, they don't care whether you're using TypeScript, they don't even care if you're using PHP. And I know that's terrible. Who the hell wants to use PHP anymore? But they don't care. What they care about is that your product does what it's supposed to do, and it does it in the most efficient manner. It does it quickly, it does it easily. That's what they care about. So don't get caught up in what technologies you're going to get going to use. As a software engineer, developer, engineer, manager, product owner, what you need to worry about is, is what we're building gonna have an impact on the end user? Okay, so what was the third most important? I think it's not necessarily a list of importance, I wouldn't say that, but it's a list of things that are all valuable. But what is coming third in the list? Understand the business value of what you're building. So this sort of comes under the remit of product focused engineers, which I class myself as. I really care about two things. Number one is what I'm building gonna make the user spend more money or reduce their time. And for the business side, am I gonna be reducing costs or am I gonna be improving profits? So there's two aspects to that product. There's how the customer is using it. Is it making their journey easier? And is it making them spend more money? And I don't mean that in a horrible way, but we're in business. We're here to make money. And from the business side is what I'm gonna build, bringing business value to the company. Am I gonna be saving the company time? And am I gonna be making the company money? If it's not doing those four things, then I am questioning whether I am building the right thing. And I'm also pushing back to the product owners, product managers, should we be building this? And those are valid questions anyone should ask as a software engineer, because you're not a drone. You don't wanna work on something that in six months time is gonna be like, well, this was terrible, right? We didn't need it. You should not push back on it. 
because that's the journey of a software engineer from especially from sort of a junior to a tech lead type level is understanding your domain your products your user and your business value number four which i think has a lot more value for people who are new into their career but i'm going to include this because i do do a lot of helping people in their early careers write more code take less tutorials now it doesn't matter if you're in work or out of work you can do this so Put the tutorial away if you're not in work and you're trying to get into the industry. Think of something you'd like to build. It could be something that solves a problem or doesn't solve a problem. It can be a website, whatever it is, and just build it. And if you get stuck with something, Google it. How do I center a div in CSS, HTML? How do I click a button? How do I update state? Just Google it and try to understand the documentation because doing that will improve you as an engineer 10 times quicker than following any tutorial. And that's something that I know from personal experience and something I know from helping thousands of people into the industry. And when I say thousands of people, I mean thousands of people. And obviously if you are in work, write code. Pick up tickets, pick up hard tickets, pick up easy tickets, pick up tickets that are in areas you've never worked before. If you are a front-end developer or you're just a developer in general, pick up some of the CICD pipeline tickets, write some YAML files, uh, pick up some back-end tickets if you're a front-end developer. And it's not to say that it's out of your remit. Nothing is out of your remit. You're a problem solver. Get used to solving problems in different areas and different languages and your career and your ability to write good code and understand code will propel beyond the stratosphere. Number five, and I think this is one that engineers of all levels really struggle with. If you want to go far in your career, your soft skills are just as important as your technical skills. Now, there's two natural progression paths for software engineers. It's usually sort of junior, mid, senior. And then from senior, you can go lead developer, principal, or you can go into management, engineer and management and above. They both cross over from lead and principal and engineer and manager. There are crossover areas where you will be in a lot more meetings. You will be breaking down products into stories and into tickets for other engineers. You'll be mentoring more. You'll be developing people's careers. So taking every advantage that you can take to develop your soft skills early on in your career will get you where you want to be further. Now, you may stand there and say, well, and plenty of people do. I don't want to be in management. I just want to be in IC. I want to be in individual contributor for the rest of my career i'm happy being a senior developer that's fine but even as a senior tech lead uh, principal there is still going to be an element of mentorship and uh, guiding people and speaking to people especially the ones on your team that is the requirement i've seen to get promoted in every company i've worked for from sort of mid to senior senior to lead and principal is your ability to mentor others into developing their careers so don't look over it just because you want to be and I see for the rest of your life because you will still need your soft skills. Number six is a priority. So prioritize writing code that is readable. So one thing that I like to do is, well, there's a few steps that I take to implement readable code. Well, starting with, for example, having variable names that mean something, not just a random X, Y, Z, L, P, G, H, F, Q, one, two, three, means nothing, but a variable that is const get customer name, const get customer details, const customer, dot e uh, const customer emails, right? It means something valuable. And whoever comes to read that code, I know exactly what that's doing. It's very clear, a very small thing to do to make readable code. What's another example? Well, have you wrote a piece of logic in 10 lines of code that you could have done in three? To me, that makes sense um, to do it in three lines of code. Code that is readable is easy to understand, is maintainable, and it's easier to fault finding and bug finding. 